Hi everyone, Lou here from With a Bow on Top by Lou. You'll find the link to my blog address below this video. This is the October Creating Kindness Design Team video on Blog Hop. And for October, we're all about colouring. So make sure you check out the other videos in this hop and plus hop over to my blog and follow through the blog hop to go from one design team member to the other to see how we've all tackled this theme of colouring. I'm always amazed at how many different ideas we come up with all on the one theme. And I'm always inspired by other design team members. So I love colouring of all different sorts and I particularly like water colouring. And for this card, I'm just going to show you some fun and easy ways to get great water coloured backgrounds. I had intended to also watercolour these great baubles but in the end I decided that I loved the crispness of the bauble and the nice muted watercolour background. I thought it was a nice contrast. So I'm going to be using these two great punches which are from the Gleaming Ornaments Punch Pack and they coordinate with the Christmas Gleaming Stamp Set. So there's some great baubles and great sentiments and some other images in that set. Perfect for making quick and easy Christmas cards that look like you took a lot of time, but they actually didn't. I love minimum effort, maximum effect uh, projects because at Christmas time, we're always so busy. So let's have a look at how I made this card. For the card, you will need some shimmery white cardstock. I've just cut a piece of A3, oh sorry, A4 cardstock in half. That's what we use in Australia. And I've just trimmed it so that it was 28 centimetres so that when you fold it, it's the regular 10 and a half, but it's only 14 centimetres long. The reason I did that is that means then you get a perfect border when you use the stitched rectangle framelits. Then you'll also need another piece of shimmery white using one of the nested, oh sorry, stitched rectangle framelits. Um, I think that is the largest one. And then the third, with the third largest, you'll need to cut another one where you're cutting the frame out. Okay. And then you get that frame and the inside keep because I've used that in the middle okay so let's have a look at how to make this card right so I'll just bring this one back in here have a look at the background can you see that gorgeous shimmer so I've used this really really lovely Stampin' Up product, product. It's Shimmer White Stampin' Emboss Powder. So it's white and glitter. And I've used that with another product from the holiday catalog, Basic Pattern Decorative Masks. And there's a few there's four different ones in there. There's this one that um, I guess is like a bit of a fleur de lis pattern. There's some tree branches and the one that I used on this card here, which is great. And then I'm going to show you how to use, the, um, I'm going to use this one on my card for my second example. So, sorry, I sound like I'm all over the place today. I thought I was all organized, which I am, but um, just not long ago today, the our settlement came through on the house that we just sold so I'm excited and um, you know lots going on so let's um, try and focus and get on to this so this is what's going to go behind oh, there's no point putting it over there to show you this is what's going to go behind the frame and it's going to have my water coloring on it now I just wanted to give you show you a little bit of an idea on how to plan your embossing so when you're doing something that's a bit random it actually takes a little bit of planning I know that sounds a bit weird but sometimes I have to think it through so that it looks organic if I don't think it through I'm almost always not really happy with it 
so this is where the frame is going to be and what I've done is I've just punched out just a couple of scraps from a um, couple of shapes ornaments from scrap because I think it, it really helps you when you're designing so this is where I how I thought the layout would be and when I'm doing my um, embossing I sort of want it to come down across here and so that just gives me a bit of an idea on how to go about placing uh, my embossing so I'm going to get my embossing buddy and rub it all over my shimmery white cardstock that just helps get the static out and particularly if it's a wet day like it is here on the Sunshine Coast it helps take the moisture out there we go and we'll just pop the mask over the top so I'm not sure I don't it's probably a little bit hard for you to see but there's the cardstock underneath there and then all you do is you just get your Versamark pad get that at the ready and I'm also going to get my embossing tray ready and I'll pull that over as soon as I've done this next part and then it's as simple as applying the Versamark just sort of pushing it in hard in that diagonal that I showed you when we were looking at how I do it just sort of rough that's it and then you might not be able to see, or you can sort of see the gleam of the of the Versamark and then pop the embossing powder over and then so you can see you've got that great pattern now this shimmery white has got glitter in it and the glitter will will um, attach to your cardstock in lots of places even if you use the embossing buddy I've found but you can easily just wipe it off just like that okay now at the risk of boring you I'm going to show you that heat set because I want to use this one but just before I do that I just want to clean my mask now I've found just while I'm using them I'm just popping it on a towel and I'm just using my Stampin' Mist, Mist what I use to clean my stamps with and I'm just going to just give it a wipe and that gets the sticky Versamark off and then at the end of this my crafting session I'll wash any of the masks that I've used but that just helps clean it straight away Versamark can be a bit sticky so it's a bit it's a good idea to get that clean straight away okay so I'm just going to bring in my heat tool and it's going to be a little bit noisy just one tip when you're using your heat tool I find that it works really well if you concentrate on one in one area then you can really see when it starts to change and be activated if you go all over it's a little bit hard to sort of see how it goes so let's get it happening. so it's just a matter of waiting till it starts to go and hopefully you'll be able to see the difference So you can see as I'm moving down here, it's starting to change. You can see the white being activated. Sorry, I know that's probably a bit like watching paint dry, but some people like to watch baby animal videos. I like to watch embossing powder activate. Well, somehow I've got my, there we go, I had the cord of my embossing, my heat gun wrapped around me. 
So there we go. Well, that looks like a couple of bits that I have missed there. There we go. Okay, so let's have a look at how we're going to get some colour on that. Now I'm going to do a different colour for my other sample. And I've chosen to use Pretty Peacock and team it with Pineapple Punch. On the sample, I've used Rococo Rose and Night of Navy. And I love how, even though I've only used the one um, pinky shade, Rococo Rose, you get the light and then a little bit darker with just the line image and then when you use the solid image you get a darker again and I I think that's a really great way to show to um, use a color just getting the variations in or graduation in color okay so a few things when you're doing watercolor backgrounds have everything ready so I'm going to use a stamp and spritz I find that works really well and gives you um, a bit of leeway in moving things around because one of the things that people complain about the most is they don't like when you get splotchy bits. So that helps. Have your aqua painter ready. I'm just using the one with the smaller brush, but you can use the bigger one if you like. And get your ink ready. Now I like to use... I'm just going to have to pause this for a second. I'll tell you why in a moment. Oh, sorry about that. Just before I pause the video, Millie, my um, very furry and um, helpful cat, decided that she was going to jump up and investigate the um, uh, shimmer, shimmer white embossing powder. So let's just say one of us has got very, very glittery paws. <laughs> oh, oh dear perfectly asleep until I decide to put the video on I just don't have time to um to to start again so um apologies let's keep going so hopefully she's um happy beside me I'll just see if I can just show you where she is so <laughs> hey Mel all right so you stay there There we go. Okay, so I've got my Pretty Peacock ink pad, got everything ready, and I'm just going to use one of my stamping blocks as a, a palette. I like to take the ink from that, close up my ink pad, and then I take the ink from this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to give this just a light spritz with my Stampin' Spritzer. And then that helps carry the color around and then it's just a matter of picking up the color with your aqua painter and you can see that it's starting to move i like to move as quickly as i can but unlike when you start with wet uh, so when you start with dry paper you've just got a bit more forgiveness in the paper Okay, I love how you get these lines here where it's sort of, um, what do you call that, whether it's, whether it's feathering off. And then as it dries, the embossed images will become more um, predominant. So I'm just going to leave it at that. It's as simple as that. Now I find when I don't wet my cardstock, I quite often get lines where I stop and start which is okay as well but in this I sort of wanted a more even-ish background so I've also got some paper towel here I'm just going to squeeze out as much as I can just to get both the glitter and the color off my aqua painter and I'm also just going to wipe my acrylic acrylic block so that I don't transfer any color to anything and then we're just going to set that aside to dry I did do one earlier just to see how the pretty peacock went I'm not sure which way I'll use it probably that way 
and so you can see it's just um, it's not coming up as pretty as what it is in um, real life it's just gone really overcast here okay so let's have a look at how this card comes together so I've scored my cardstock in half and I have um, got my front ready and I have already cut my frame using the stitch rectangle framers and I've just popped some foam adhesive strips around three sides and I've just put a few around a couple on the top leaving a gap I learned from experience on the front that I just need a bit of off the front of this one just need a bit of room to pop it in okay so let's get this put together so I'm just going to pop my tape on the back you can put glue of course if you like I find that oh of course my tapes run out <laughs> oh dear uh, look I could do I, I know that there are so many people who do such beautifully polished videos but I guess I'm more about the everyday crafter and these these mishaps happen to me all the time do they happen to you okay I'm just going to peel the backing oh, peel, peel the tape off instead oh dear Hey, if you're still here watching thank you I appreciate it just seem to be a bit crazy today don't I <laughs> I don't think you can see it but I'm getting whacked in the shoulder with a cat's tail so I'm just going to center this so I've got even uh, even space around on all sides and then I'm going to attach my frame and I'll just make sure that I keep Uh, the area that's got that space in it at the top okay and then this outside shape is exactly the same size using the same die as the bottom piece so it's just a matter of lining it up over the top nothing ever happens well when you're rushing does it oops there we go now you can see that that's dropped a little bit there but I'll pop something in there to hold it up I just found just made it a bit tricky okay so I've got these great baubles here from the uh, Christmas gleaming stamp set and also this great Merry Christmas and I love how it's solid so I've already stamped those so here's the Merry Christmas I've stamped it in pretty peacock and you can see the difference between the um, the depth of color stamping it in the solid and then using the watercolor okay now I've cut that out using this uh, this die from the stitch rectangle framelets it's not the right length but it's the perfect width and I've just tucked it underneath the bauble okay so I've stamped the small bauble in pretty peacock and I've stamped the bigger one in uh, pineapple punch but I just want to show you something before you punch it out I found it easier to use my hole punch to pop the holes in when you punch it out first you've only got this really narrow area and so I um, found that I broke that but if you use if you um, do the whole punch before you actually um, punch the whole shape out it's a little bit easier that I'm going to use a take your pick tool and just make that hole a little bit bigger so it fills in the space on the hanger there and then I can just grab my punch which can I have that Mel of course a punch is comfortable to sit on who would know that okay and then I love how these punches punch out you the images use leaving a nice tiny border there we go as simple as that so then you get these great shapes 
I've always loved blues and yellows together so I thought pretty peacock and yellow would look really lovely together too. So that's the basis of how the design goes together. Let's have a look at all the little um, all the little um, parts of putting it together. So I'm just using some silver metallic thread. Um, I used the rose on this card. And I'm just going to thread it through my hole. I'm just using a double strand. It just makes it a bit more visible. So I've got a, I've got more there than what I need. I'll just lay that there. Oops. And then we'll just do this one as well. I was also going to use this silver thread to tie a bow, but it's so tiny and oh, I just I just some days I can do it and today I just couldn't so they're bowless. Oh well. Alright, there we go. So I'll just lay those there. So this one's going to be touching the frame. So I'll just put a glue dot on the side here. Yep. Yeah. And then I'm also just going to put some foam adhesive underneath where I'm touching just there. I'm just going to put it towards the top because I know I want to feed my sentiment in underneath there. Now I found it easier to secure the bauble, thread the bauble, then secure it and then um, pop the, the thread underneath. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the thread through and the take your pick tool is perfect for this. Sorry, it's probably really hard to see. Just sort of poke it through. This will help get it taut. Uh, there we go. Oops, there's one through. There we go. Sorry, I made that look a lot harder than what it was. So just sort of pull it where you want it to be. You see, it's up there. And then what I'm going to do is pop a glue dot behind there. And then I will cut off the excess. But it's a little bit of, I probably wouldn't normally have quite that much extra excess. But it just, um, where did that other one go? I've lost it. Um... Oh dear, dearie me. <laughs> I've got one end. Oh, there it is. There we go. Sorry. I tried a few different ways. This, believe it or not, was the easiest. And when you're, when you're not trying to do it um, and keep your head out of the way so that you... Um, someone can see it through the video. It is a lot easier. Apologies that this is taking so long. There we go. So I've got my two ends together and then I've got my glue dot which is just on the end of my take your pick tool which I seem to have stuck to something and then I'm just going to pop that underneath and just secure it from the back. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Apologies, everyone. There we go. Perfect. All right. And then you just trim off the excess and then it will just go underneath there. And that will just be secure. And then the other one I'm going to raise on two. Oh. Just pulled that out, didn't I? 
on two Stampin' Dimensionals. So it's just the height of two Stampin' Dimensionals is just a little bit higher than the foam adhesive. So I don't want it to be on that side. There we go. Pop the Stampin' Dimensionals on. Allow them to secure your bauble while you easily put the tape in. So I just want it to sort of be down so you don't want to have them lined up. Okay, and then I'm just going to, I'll go and do exactly the same thing that I did before, but I will um, spare you. <laughs> that I'll finish that and show you and then this just goes underneath here now I just cut trim the end off a little bit okay oops and then I'm going to pop it underneath there I'm just going to put one thickness of dimensional underneath that and then that's just sort of it's not that easy to see in the video but it just gives you a little bit of difference in height but isn't that a pretty background and you could it doesn't have to be for Christmas you could do anything depending on what the pattern is you could have any sort of Christmas card or sorry any sort of card for any occasion and then I'll just stick that on there there we go and then as I said I'll go and finish that string so you don't have to watch that it's much easier to do when you can just put your head in but isn't that background pretty a shame the colour's not showing up for you as pretty as what it is but let's just have a look on the inside so the piece that I cut out from the middle of the frame I've added and then I have just heat embossed the holly image with the same same shimmer white embossing powder and then I've just watercolored it using the inks and I've stamped the Merry Christmas beside so that's just a fun, easy way of colouring in a background. Hopefully you'll um, give it a try. I'd love to see what you do um, with that technique. So make sure you hop around, hop over to my blog and follow the blog hop around to see what everyone's made. Thanks everybody. Sorry about all the, um, the distractions. Oh, what a day. Okay, until next time. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye.